goodness. Hello, Alice. How are you doing this morning? Or it's afternoon for you. Well, it's uh, 10 to uh, 10 to 6 here. Yeah, oh, it's, it's evening. <laughs> We're in Los Angeles, ladies, right now. Lois is in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, how is how is the weather there? Oh, you know, it's a little overcast this morning, but that's okay because you know it's supposed to be seventy three degrees and just as always, lovely in Los Angeles. <laughs> well, I've never been there. It's just on my bucket list. I'm gonna go at some point. Oh yeah, I guess it'll be a little while, but I I, I don't think it'll disappoint. I hope so. Like, right, ladies, I would like to welcome Lois, Dr. Lois Franco here. Uh, she is an internationally sought after author, executive coach, and keynote speaker. Uh, and she is perhaps best known for her writing the best selling business Bible for women Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office, do they? <laughs> Well, they can if they add some behaviors to their skill set. Oh, well, Lois, welcome again. Could, could you come on, tell us about your entrepreneurial journey? Because I've got all these wonderful women here eager to know your story and all the, the wisdom that you're going to share with us. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, you know, my journey wasn't that different th than many women's journey, which is, um, you know, I was taught to always have a job, right? And I had two brothers that were entrepreneurs, but my parents didn't see me as an entrepreneur. <laughs> and I think obviously it's because I was a woman. So I was working um, full time for Arco, the oil company, which then was sold to BP. Um, and I decided that I wanted to quit and start my own consulting practice. And everybody discouraged me. This was in 1986. And everybody discouraged me, they, including my parents, saying, you know, you have a great job, you make good money, you work for a well-respected company, you know, you should just stay there. And I thought to myself, you know, I can't see myself being here the rest of my life. It just didn't suit me well. Um, it was a, and it was a great company and it did make plenty of money, but it, I just wasn't well suited for corporate life, uh, that kind of corporate life anyway. So, uh, I quit my job and I started what was first a private practice of psychotherapy in downtown Los Angeles because, uh, I had just gotten my PhD in counseling psychology and that's what I really always wanted to do is be a psychologist. So I thought, okay, let me start my, my uh, practice here. And I started, and again, everybody said, you know, my, I never I remember my mother's words. The thought of you being unemployed makes my stomach turn. And I, I said to her, you have two sons who are both entrepreneurs own their own businesses and they're not unemployed. So that was the kind of support that I got. Same thing from friends. It's um, funny that women always has to explain their passion and vision to people around them, whereas men are expected to be successful in their business. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I started my private practice and um, after a very short time, I realized I wasn't happy. And I thought, oh my God, did I make a mistake? Um, and I was thinking, what am I going to do? I just couldn't see myself in a room uh, hours on end, not seeing daylight, right? So right around that time, a woman contacted me and said, Lois, would you be willing to coach someone? Now you have to remember, this was 1987. Wow. And there were no business coaches back then. And she was somebody who was always on the cutting edge of things. And I said to her, well, I'm not sure what it is, but I'd be happy to give it a try. And she said, oh, you know, Lois, you've done training, you've done therapy, you've worked in human resources, you put it all together, you have a coach. And it was life changing. The fact that I said yes to something that I had no idea what I was going to do was life changing. My life truly changed from then. And I never worked another day in my life because I loved what I did so much. I became an executive coach. Wow. That's brilliant well just before you logged in that's what we were exactly talking about you should ha you should go with your instincts and your gut feelings and you should always do what people say no to if you have people 
says now around you don't listen to them listen to your heart and do what you what you believe in and that's what you've done exactly so that's really really fascinating yeah you know what i say is don't listen to the naysayers that's listen it. to the yaysayers yes the ones who say yeah you can do this and let me give you some advice um you know i recently wanted to go in a little bit of a different direction i always wanted to have a little gift shop right it was just something i always wanted to do i thought gee you know as i get towards the next chapter of my life maybe i'll have a little gift shop and people kept telling me do not do this lois it's like don't sign a lease do not do this um this brick and mortar stores are going out of business and i actually listened to them and i thought okay if i'm going to do it maybe i need to do it differently and now boy am i glad with covid uh <laughs> right so so you you need to listen to people who are going to give you good advice um and make you think well, how can i do what i want to do in a smarter way well it's um i think sometimes you've got to listen to your gut feeling but when you are i mean i have a brick and mortar shop myself and uh um and when i when it happened my business isn't online it wasn't online uh but i had to i had to suddenly overnight change my way of my business to make it online more visible what can i do to increase my sales online how can i how can i make myself that is as desirable as it was for my locals and wider audience and you just suddenly start so if you were to go ahead with your gift shop you would way a fine you would find a way to to do and make it success i think it wouldn't make a big difference but i'm so pleased you become a coach <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you and and with regard to your online presence you know the research shows that covid advanced e-commerce by three to five years yes so it's like all of a sudden we are like where we people thought we would be five years from now and so you know that's a big part of i think what entrepreneurs need to do is do their research really um and i agree with you listen to your gut but i think you're particularly when you're going in an area you know nothing about um your your gut is good and you need to complement it with people who have more knowledge than you have in certain areas not let them stop you just get more data that's right well what was the best piece of advice you ever received when the best i'm sorry go ahead when you started out and still what is the best piece of advice you've ever received yeah that is very easy the best piece of advice i ever received was you pay in advance for capacity now what that means is that you are going to pay for things when you can least afford it if you want to build capacity in your business okay so let me give you an example i'll give you two examples one was when i first started my coaching business and and remember about a year earlier i had quit my job so it wasn't like i had a lot of extra money as a matter of fact i had to take a second out of my house um, to be able to pay all the bills um, but i still had faith in myself so that's why i was willing to do it and um i went and i bought all of these promotional materials marketing materials you know and back then you had to have them printed right it, because people wanted brochures and things like that we weren't into e-brochures and so when i could least afford it i went out and i had all of this really great paid a lot of money for marketing materials that would make me look and feel like a big company which i wanted to be and so it really gave me confidence to go out there and market to big companies which i wanted to be my my base i wanted them to refer clients to me uh i i didn't necessarily want to work with i didn't want to coach clients who came to me on their own i wanted to coach clients that were referred to me by corporations now that was a strategy because i heard one one entrepreneur say you always want a, a client who's not going to look at the checkbook when they write the check i think and i never forgot that so so that was my strategy um and it worked 
So that was one place where I paid in advance for capacity. And the other place was a number of years later. It was probably like 10 or so years later. And I was still kind of operating on a shoestring because I didn't have the confidence to take out big loans. Um, and so uh, I was doing a lot of the things myself and I was getting part-time people to help me, but it really wasn't working. And, and one day when I was sitting in a client's office, uh, I was thinking about everything I had to do back at my office and I thought that's no way to do coaching, thinking about what you have to do somewhere else. So at that moment, I remember the moment, I remember the client, I remember where I was sitting. I remember thinking, okay, put that aside, you're going to hire somebody. And again, you know, even though I wasn't sure I could afford um, to hire a full-time person, I went ahead and I did it, even if it meant me taking a cut. And it was the next best thing I ever did because um, she I hired the right person and she enabled me to go out and really build the business, do development, come up with new ideas, because I wasn't bogged down in little details that weren't my forte anyway. So, uh, and from there, the business grew exponentially. So, and I point to her and I give her a lot of credit for this, for really helping me build the business. And sometimes that's exactly what you need. It's true. I think what happened is only very recently I realized I was I was always taught this multitasking is what entrepreneurs need to do. But multitasking is actually the worst thing you can do for your business, because whilst you're trying to do everything, you're actually losing out all the other valuable things that you as a person can deliver for your business, whilst all the other things can be done by somebody else who's happy to do that for you. And you think you're losing money by paying people, but you're actually making more. It's very important. I like that you said this because I was feeling like that recently because I've now got a team that helps me, you know, do my my event management, who does my social media. It's just uh, at the beginning, I would do everything by myself. And at the end of the day, I would be completely out of breath and I've got a little child and I want to have the social life going on it was just like really full on so it's really good to hear from women who has made it and successfully that confirming it's really good that's excellent I know this is quite a cliche I was going to ask you but we we have a lot of new starters in the audience that I know and I would like to ask you that if you could so if you could go back and start right at the beginning uh, of your journey, what would you do differently? The beginning of my entrepreneurial journey? Yeah. It's a great question. I would have taken more risks. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would have taken more risks um, because I kind of had in mind to build my business and then sell it. Um, and so I, I started building the business and I, and I realized I had to have a big book of clients and of, of big clients, which I did. Um, but I think it would have had to have been even bigger to sell it. And so in order to do that, I would have probably had to open up more offices around the country. And originally that was my intent. To, and the name of my coaching business is Corporate Coaching International. Mm. And uh, we, uh, we did work around the world, but we only had our business in Los Angeles. We had the headquarters in Los Angeles. And so I would have taken more risk and open, I would have taken out loans and opened up more businesses around the country. And I think that would have built the business and then I would have been able to sell the business. Um, and I'm not disappointed that it worked out the way it did because it played to my strengths. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't necessarily want to run a big business. That wasn't my strengths that, that, although, you know, I could certainly do it, but uh, what I really wanted was to provide excellent coaching. And I did that with a team of people. And at our largest, we had about 15 coaches that went around the world and did coaching. A and that was manageable to me. And I think beyond that, I'm not sure I would have been as fulfilled, but, but that's the difference. That's, you asked me what I would have done differently, that would have been it. Take more risks and make it bigger and sell it. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. 
it's just investing in your business. I think we've, uh, we, we don't think that we should invest in ourselves and our businesses, but actually it's the best thing you can do for yourself, isn't it? Well, it is. I think if you do your research, you know, again, it's really important to do the research. When I started, there were no other coaching firms. I mean, we were one of the first in the, in the world. Wow. And by now, we know everyone calls themselves a coach, right? You have hairdressers and real estate agents and, you know, all kinds of people that call themselves coaches. Yes. And so the business change, it, it, it really did change. But there isn't um, much of a regulation to hold off that, is there? So anyone can do it, it seems like. No, there's not much regulation, although more corporations smartened up and they said they would only hire coaches who uh, were certified. Or, you know, and I think the certification, one of the certifications comes from uh, the Coach Federation, the, the, the Coaching Federation. Um, and they had one of the first certification programs. But now there's all kinds of certification programs and they're expensive. They can be, you know, anywhere from $8,000 to $20,000. Wow. And that's a big investment, uh, particularly in a field that's very crowded. So, um, you know, again, you have to do your research and what is your niche going to be? You know, I, I, you know, I made the niche early on. This is something else that's really important for entrepreneurs is what's going to make you different than everyone else. So as coaching became more popular, I could say what made my firm different was three things. Number one, we use a team based approach that you don't just get one coach with us we identify coaching needs and then send in the coaches that are going to meet those needs number two we we use um, licensed psychologists to do the assessments so that <clears throat> excuse me <coughs> so that you're assured you're getting a certain standard with the with the uh, coaches that come in to work for you and number three we only use coaches who have eight to ten years or more of experience so again that was our niche and that made us more expensive uh, and and for a while that was fine because it worked because people knew they were getting something different and then suddenly as i said the market got flooded and the fees got depressed to some extent mm -hmm. when at one point which point that you decided to write your book Oh, I can remember the moment. Um, can you I, tell us, please? Uh, I can remember the moment. Uh, you know, it's funny because for big uh, events in my life, I don't know about everybody else, but for big events in my life, I can remember moments. And the moment was when I was coaching a woman in Herndon, Virginia, which is on the other side of the country from Los Angeles. And she had been sent to me for coaching because, and you have to remember back then you were sent for coaching because your employer wanted to change you. Now everybody wants a coach, but uh, she had been sent to me for coaching because she was a little bit on the aggressive side of assertive, you know, and we know that we call those women a bitch, right? <laughs> so she had been sent to me for coaching for that reason. And I'd been working with her for several months. And when I went in, for a session, she said, before we get started, I just want to tell you that I was invited to sit on the executive committee of my company. And I went to give her a high five and she stopped me. And I said, what? And she said, you know, I'm not going to do it. And I said, you are, let me get this right. You were invited to sit on the executive committee of your company after they thought you were too aggressive and you're not going to do it. This better be good, Sandra. And she said, Lois, I've been to those meetings. They're a waste of time. And, and what popped out of my mouth was, honey, you better quit being a girl. And at that moment, all of the foolish things I saw women do because of how they were socialized flooded into my head. I mean, I knew what she meant was that, you know, women have to work twice as hard to be considered half as good. They can't waste any time, blah, 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 blah. But as I said to her, they're called meetings. They're not called workings. You go there to see, to be seen, to get information, to give information, to market your brand, to do all kinds of, of things. They don't always have to be productive. Um, and so on the, on the plane back, I outlined 
all of what I was calling quit being a girl. And, and the publisher changed it to nice girls don't get the corner office. Ah, I love it. It's it, how much pressure we have, isn't it? It's, it's like, um, I was listening to somebody else um, um, when there was a, a board meeting and she was the only woman in the room and, um, and the cu cups, the, there, there needs to be teas made and all the male in the room looked at her. All she did looked away. Right. I mean, right? I mean, can you picture a guy doing the same thing? No. Right. No. And so there's certain things we do because of how we're socialized and they can form the basis of our greatest strengths. As I, as I told the publisher, uh, when they changed the name to Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office, I did not like the title because they said, you know, I'm not saying you can't be nice. I'm just saying you can't be the little girl you were taught to be in childhood yes. and expect to achieve your adult goals. But they kept the title. And so, um, you know, I get, I, it, though. I get it. I yeah, get it. I get it. It's really, uh, it's very smart. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna be like cheeky, but what are your top coaching tips for entrepreneurs? Yeah, I think, you know, I do have three and I have them written down here because I wanted to make sure I give you the three that I really want. Um, and I think that uh, number one would be develop a clear vision of where you want to be and how you want to be known. You know, People start businesses, and I, and I just give an example. I had a woman one day say to me, I, I, it's when I used to do a radio show, and someone called in and said, I have a childcare business, um, and I want to know how I can get more business. And I said, okay, tell me what makes your childcare facility different from all the rest. And there was silence. And I said, until you know, until you have a vision of where you want to be, and who you are and what defines you you know your brand differently than everybody else you're not going to get more business just like i had to define my coaching business to distinguish me and my business from uh all the others out there once they started once we started seeing more of them um you know i had to create a niche so and i think for many women they're afraid to narrow their niche because they'll they'll miss out on some business well it's counterintuitive but the more narrow your niche the more business you get True. because peep everybody wants to hire a specialist right they want somebody who specializes so when you say you know you specialize in i'm just going to say doing accounting for psychologists and other mental health professionals, you're gonna get a huge group, a huge group of people within that population. Nice. And so don't be afraid to narrow your niche. Um, the next thing I'm gonna say is expect and prepare for pushback and for challenges and setbacks. There is going, there's always going to be them. There is going to be people who say you can't do this. There's going to be economic downturns. You know, I, I can remember in 1980, what was, when was the economic downturn of, I think it was 2003, wasn't it? 2003. 2008, thank you, 2008. I remember putting my head on my desk and saying, I worked a long time really hard for this. Um, and I can't believe it looks like it's all going to go up in smoke. That was, that was kind of like the oh pity me day. But then the next day I looked at my team and I said, okay, what are we going to do to turn this around? And I got pushback. You know, what do you mean? What are we going to do? The economy tank, blah, blah, blah. I said, no. We're going to stay in people's faces. We're going to let them know we're here. We are going to keep going, put one foot in front of the other. And that was a time when I did invest in my business because I wasn't going to let anybody go. I remember um, Tom Watson from IBM during uh, the Great Depression said, I'm not going to let anybody go because I'm going to be poised to get all the business that other people won't get because they closed up shop. And so that's what I did. Um, you know, I prepared for it. I had money set away for it. 
uh, and that's what you need to do. And then the third thing that I would say, and again, this sounds kind of counterintuitive, and that is help other people start their businesses. My experience is the more I give away, the more I get. Right? And I don't, I don't give away things, help or, you know, you contacted me, LF, and I said, I'd be happy to help you. It, not because I think you're going to give me anything, because it's the right thing to do. If I have the bandwidth, if I have the time, if I have the resources to help another woman, you better believe I am going to. And I know that that has paid off exponentially for me over the years in ways I, I least expected. So uh, those would just be three tips that I would give to entrepreneurs. I love it. I love it. I totally agree. I mean, I am a giver. I love giving and helping. And this is, I mean, I spent two weeks. I've decided to do this two weeks ago. And I just spent all of these two weeks to create this because I know so many women out there, so many entrepreneurs who are startups or who have been in the business for a while, but they can't seem to scale up. They have been, I know they need some inspiration and they need some tips. Um, it's just uh, i'm so pleased that you you are giving your time to share it with us well i'm gonna ask you one uh, there's uh, somebody else asking could you quickly run the three tips again for yeah i said uh, number one let me say it more briefly number one uh you need to have a vision, have a vision. and define your brand what is going to make you different than everyone else out there you need to know it and you need to communicate it. Number two, prepare for challenges and setbacks. They are going to come. Do not let them get you off track. What, you know, I think it was Albert Einstein who said, you know, in challenges are opportunities. And you know, I actually had one client who said to me, Lois, I've never met anybody who's reinvented themselves so many times. <laughs> and it's true. Because every time I found a challenge, I looked for another little product line to add, right? So when more coaches came out, it was like, okay, now I need to do more keynote speaking, or now I need to write another book, or now I need to do that, this or that. So, you know, and during some of these downturns, that's exactly what I did. I used the time to write books. If I wasn't going out coaching, what was I going to do? Just sit in, um, Both you things. know, <laughs> yeah, right. I wasn't going to have a pity party. Uh, and, my, and my mantra th from the day one when I started my business was failure is not an option. Amazing. And and I continue to tell myself that in various ways. And then the third thing I said was um, help others, be of service to others. The more you give away, the more you get. And it doesn't always come from the same source and yeah. and you don't do it because you're going to get something you do it because it's the right thing to do be generous of spirit yes that is so beautiful thank you i'm just going to allow our audience if anybody wants to ask questions to lois as she is here with us um because you you've shared such valuable information with us it's brilliant it, sometimes what happens is when you're in business, right in it, right in the middle of it, you just run out of ideas and it's always good to have coach and someone to inspire you around you to get you to the next level or help you, help you unleash what's within you. You know, sometimes you, you know there is something, you know you've built for something more, but you sometimes can't seem to get it out. So it's really good to be able to help you know have have coaches to help us i don't know if anybody else there wants to say anything were you going to say something lois yeah i was just going to say you know another thing that maybe people should do is uh there are a number of entrepreneurial quizzes online uh you know are you cut out to be an entrepreneur and i think it's worth it to take those because i remember um when a friend of mine wanted to start her business and she quit her job and she started a consulting business, very smart woman. And within a short time, she realized she wasn't suited to it because you work alone a lot in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that. Mm -hmm. And 
she actually needed other people to kind of inspire and motivate her. And she went to, back to working for a company, you know, maybe after a year or two. And that was right for her. Being an entrepreneur isn't right for everybody. Sometimes you can be an intrapreneur. Sometimes within a company, it'll give you enough bandwidth to do the things you really love to do and that you're good at. And it's more stable and you interact with other people. And you know, sometimes the people are better suited for that. So just go online, find an entrepreneur quiz. That's brilliant. Where can we find that? Is it just- You know, I, I actually have one. Uh, and if people will contact me okay. at, at info, at drloisfrankel.com, that's info at my name, drloisfrankel.com, with no spaces or periods. Um, I'll be happy to send it to you. And you were so generous, and you were giving a free your um, gift link, but I couldn't seem to open the link that you added for your. I couldn't see that the link that you had shared. I think there. I'll share the email address and so you can just share it with everyone if that's okay. I can't seem to get my phone work. I've got two screens, you see. I'm looking at here, but my actual screen is there. <laughs> Being very techy today, it's not, not my expertise. I could have put a wedding dress for you here. What You could watch me do it. <laughs> When it comes to tech things, I'm a bit useless. <laughs> this is brilliant. Thank you so much, Lois. You have been real, real help. And it's really good to have you on board with us. It's really been a pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. And, and I really just do tell women out there that if there's something you have a burning desire to do, don't let anyone, don't let anything talk you out of it because that's how you're going to create your personal legacy is by living your life the way you want not the way other people want you to live it thank you that's brilliant thank you so much Lois. thank you